Hello, my name is Chris Anthony. Most people call me the Straw Hat Farmer, and I'm with Grow Debtor. And I'm out inside of our aquaponics greenhouse. And today I want to talk to you about pH. I want to talk to you about how I check my pH, some methods that I've used that I don't like, and some methods that I do like, and a little bit about how we raise and lower pH, and how pH really affects your garden. See, a lot of people think that actual pH is really for the fish. It's why we need to maintain and stabilize a steady pH. But actually, fish can actually take a wide range of pH as long as it changes slowly. But plants, they don't like a wide range of pH. They want to hold a maintain a stable pH. That's why we've got these beautiful cucumbers growing in here, and eggplants, and tomatoes, and peppers, and all these beautiful plants. We're maintaining those because we have good heavy nutrients and we have a good stable pH. Now pH, it basically runs on a scale from 0 to 14 with 7 being perfectly neutral. Now when you get off on your scale and 6, anything below a 7 is going to be considered acidic. And when you're measuring your pH and it shows 6, you're actually not one number off, you're actually 10 times off because pH is measured at 6, 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, and so on. And anything above a 7 is considered basic or alkaline. It's the same there. So when you're actually running 7.2, 7.4, 7.6, 1.8, when you're 8, you're 10 times more alkaline or basic than what a 7 is. And that's why it's really important to maintain a perfect 7. Now let me show you some methods that I've used over the years that I didn't like and some that I do like. And let's start out with the basic simple one, being a test strip. Keep in mind, folks, these are for tropical fish tanks. They're nothing to do with aquaponics. You basically pull out your strip and you hold it inside the tank. And it actually tells you in the instructions how long to hold it. And you put it in there for a couple of seconds and you match it to a color chart. The problem with matching that to a color chart is, is a lot of times we don't get a good accurate reading. So in my opinion, these are great for fish tanks, but they're not very accurate for aquaponics. And then if you step up a grade, you're actually going to come to a little solution and a little test vial. You basically fill the test vial up to your line of where the water level should be, and then you drop in X amount of drops according to what the instruction says. Now we're back to another issue here. Do we know that our dropper is actually dropping the correct amount every single time? And we're depending on our eye to match this to our pH. Now, since fish are actually not that sensitive to the pH as long as it's a slow change, most of these methods actually only measure pH in whole numbers of 6, 7, 8, and what have you. So I don't like that one. That's not very accurate for me, in my opinion, for my aquaponics garden. So what I use is a digital meter. Now I'm sure I'm going to get flooded with emails and comments and want to know exactly the manufacturer and the model. I actually own several of these and I have found they're all pretty accurate and they range from price from about 40 bucks up to a couple hundred according to what you want to spend. And be sure that with a digital meter you actually order your buffer solution because your buffer solution actually allows you to uh, turn the dials here and actually calibrate this thing to be a perfect neutral 7. So when you get started, you'll be started off on the right foot. And the good thing about this is, is you can actually just turn it on, hold it down in the water, the little end of the probe here in the water, and then actually pull it out and you'll actually have a perfect uh, digital reading of 6.8, 6.97, 7.2, what have you. Today, let's see what mine is. Mine typically always runs a little bit low. In fact, all the years that I've done aquaponics, I've actually found that every aquaponics system I've ever had actually maintained a little bit on the low side. I've never had one that stayed on the high side. Okay, I'm running about 6.8 here. Now, the pH meter gives me that accurate reading. Now, if you're actually getting a very low or very high pH, or excuse me, a high pH or a low pH continuously, a lot of times, it could be your grow media that you're actually growing your plants in. Now, if you're using rainwater or well water to actually top off your system from the evaporation each week, it could be, if it's really low, it could be from the rainwater because most rainwater has, has an acidic value somewhere between 5.5 and about a 6.6. So that automatically drives the system down. Then, of course, if you're using rainwater, you need to check your rainwater and actually see what your pH is so you'll know. I myself use strictly, uh, mostly well water here to top off my system each week. 
Now, if you're using city or county water, that could actually be part of the issue too. You need to make sure exactly what that pH of that water is if that's what you're using to top off your system. Now, now that we've discussed the actual pH values and what they are and how we check it, let's talk a little bit about how we raise and lower our pH organically. Now, as you can see, my garden's doing fine, and I've used the same methods for many, many years. And I have found that a couple of methods, excuse me there, I've got something on the edge of my eye here. Um, seems like the best methods I have found for actually raising my pH is on a slower basis is actually consists of an eggshell and basically what I do is I actually stick the eggshell this is after I fix a good morning breakfast and by the way speaking of breakfast you always want to check your pH early in the morning I never check my pH late in the afternoon I like to check it in the morning so that I get a good steady stable true reading because most systems have a little bit of algae in them and algae really affects your pH so you want to keep as much algae out of the system as possible to maintain a good steady pH. But after I fix that morning breakfast with some good eggs and bacon, and these are farm raised hen eggs right here on our farm, I actually stick them in the microwave for a few seconds and then I pull this skin out of here. The reason I put them in the microwave is I want to kill any bacteria that happens to be inside that eggshell. Then I'll pull the skin out. Then I'll take a lady's pantyhose, and I always get some good jokes and comments about this. I'll take a lady's pantyhose, cut the foot out of it, and I actually crumble these eggs, these egg shells. I crumble all the shells down inside of here. Squeeze them really good. Now this is not a fast way to actually raise your pH. This is actually kind of a slow method, but egg shells are really healthy for your aquaponic system. They're also healthy for your soil gardening, and they're actually healthy for your rain barrels. So if you want to start throwing all your eggshells in the actual soil garden, it would be perfectly healthy for it. Now, I crush this up really well. I tie a knot in my pantyhose, and I go over to one of the water inlets in my bed. And I have my water turned off just so you can hear me a little better. And then I basically lay this at the water inlet, and I let the water flow right over top of those eggshells. And as those eggshells break down, they'll actually help me maintain a more steady pH and they're healthy for your system. Now I also maintain some outdoor ponds. And the problem with outdoor aquaponics ponds is every time I have a hard rain, say I get a two inch rain, I don't actually get two inches because I only get two inches in the pond. But since they have beds attached to them, I actually get a two inch rain for each bed. So if I've got two beds in a pond, I actually end up getting six inches of rain in a pond and that could easily drop my system drastically. So what I do in that case, because I don't want my pH dropping, it will shock my plants, I actually just drop in a teaspoon of baking soda. Baking soda is perfectly fine for my aquaponics pot. I've done it for many years. Just drop that spoonful in, come back the next day, check it again, you'll probably find your pH has moved up. And I'm going to recommend a teaspoon per every, let's say, uh, 300 gallons plus, I would drop one teaspoon, then see what happens. Now keep in mind, pH becomes the most stable after about 300 gallons. So I like to keep my pH system at 300, 300 gallons or above. Now let's talk a little bit about how to lower your pH. Well, as we spoke earlier about rain barrels, that's an easy solution to actually lower your pH without any problems. But I have done aquaponics many years, and I find that most aquaponics systems run on the low side. They typically don't run on the high side. But if you have a system that is running a little bit high and you need to drop it, an easy, easy method is just to add some rainwater. Instead of topping off with well water or city water or what have you, just add some rainwater into your system. That is automatically going to lower your pH some because there again, as I said before, most rainwater I find runs between 5.5 and about 6.5. So that's an easy method to lower it. But myself, I don't use rainwater too much because for me to drain off my system, to add rainwater, it actually loses some of my nutrients. Now I'm going to give you a good organic method to drop your, rate, your pH pretty quickly, and you don't have to worry about it because of the fact that some areas actually cannot collect rainwater any longer. We've actually banned that because it's not their water is what they're saying. I'm not going to get into that today though. An easy way is to slice a lime. And yes, I've done a video on this before. 
yes, I remember all the controversy and all the messages and all the emails about how a teaspoon of lime is going to kill the bacteria in 300 gallon system. Folks, that is impossible. So think about this before you comment or before you send me a message telling me how foolish this is. Plus, take a look around. Is my garden not doing fine? I have done this for many, many years. A teaspoon of lime will not kill bacteria in 300 gallons. Basically, what I do is I take a spoon and I actually squeeze out my lime. Now, keep in mind, a lime has a pH of around 4. So I will actually squeeze out a teaspoon of lime and I'll drop it in my system right near the water outlet where it's pumping really hard. And then I will actually stir that up and I'll wait a couple of days and then I'll check it again. If I need to, I'll add another teaspoon of lime. And I am not concerned about bacteria. It's impossible for a teaspoon or two of lime to actually kill the bacteria in 300 gallons. If that was possible, we would be using lime and lemon for all disinfectants because we could actually clean our toilet with, a, with literally an ounce of lime and a gallon of water. But we all know that that's not going to kill most bacteria. So I can assure you, this is perfectly healthy. It's not going to hurt your bacteria. I've done it for many years. Just drop a teaspoon of lime juice, and I don't use the bottle of lime, I always use the fresh. Drop that in your system, and that will lower your pH without any problems. Now, if you don't have a lime, you can use a lemon. But keep in mind, a lemon is a pH of around 2 to 2.5. So you want to drop about a, no more than a teaspoon of lime, a lemon at one time into your system. Now, I can assure you, that's not going to kill bacteria in 300 gallons. There's no possible way that a one ounce of lime juice or lemon juice can kill bacteria at 300 gallons. That's impossible. So let's take that away now because before the emails start coming in. And let's keep in mind, if you want to have and stabilize a good, easy, simple, simple system of pH, is simply a penny hose full of eggshells, lime juice, and a good, dependable pH meter. And those three things right there, and a rain barrel, would actually help you maintain a good, stable pH in your aquaponic system. Then you can maintain a good, steady flow of fresh, healthy produce coming out of your aquaponics greenhouse. I hope this really helps and helps clear up some of the pH issues, especially those issues of will an ounce of lemon juice or lime juice kill your bacteria. It's absolutely impossible. It's not going to happen. I've done this many years, as I've said before. So let's don't worry about that. Let's just maintain a good, steady pH. Now, if you have a high pH every single day, then you've probably got an issue in your system. Because I've done aquaponics a long time, and I've never seen that happen. And just right now, at the present, I'm actually operating about five different aquaponics systems here at our place. And I never have a continuous high pH. What usually happens there is you've either got some grow media affecting it or your top off water or something else is actually affecting your pH or alkalinity or something has gotten off. So to maintain a good steady pH, you need to let it stabilize and then check it a few days and keep with organic because organic pH solution is the only way that I can find that I want to eat these fresh vegetables and fresh fish. The pH up and down is actually a chemical. I don't want to pour a bottle chemical into my pH, into my fish tank to actually raise and lower my pH. I want to stick with organic as much as possible. I hope this really helps you. I hope this clears up some issues. And I hope you maintain a good stable pH in your system so you'll have plenty of fresh vegetables. And I hope to see you again soon. My name is Chris Anthony. I'm with GrowDinner.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Have a good day. See you in the garden again.